Extra glasses. There's a milk bucket. Magic scepter. That's the magic scepter. Lantern. He's witchcraft to burn two people alive. Okay, so weirdly enough, the bucket doesn't have any mud on it, which is the only weird thing about it. I would probably, I mean, uh, I don't think we're going to get much from the dude again. You know, looking at this milk bucket now, it does look sort of different from the sketch, don't you think? <gasps> it does. Didn't it have a rope on it before? It might be a good idea to get a nice good look at the actual milk bucket. <laughs> oh boy. The girl was not holding the scepter in the same hand as the lantern, which means... It must have been in her other hand! Hmm. Should I use a hint coin? Mm, yeah. I'm going to use one just in case. Alright, so I'm going to try presenting... Probably the milk bucket. It says milk bucket or the lantern. So we'll try the milk bucket because in the drawing it looks like the milk bucket has a rope where this milk bucket looks like... She it, would actually have to be holding it with her tiny no hand. There's no way yeah. it could go on her wrist. All of your testimonies have come to the same conclusion. The scepter was not in her right hand with the lantern. Therefore, it must have been in her other hand that was holding the bucket. Mm-hmm. However, that's not it by a long shot. I love you shake your head at the same time, Sim. <laughs> I get into character. What do you mean, Apprentice Baker? Contrary to what one of the witnesses stated, the milk bucket was in fact at the cream... Ah, the crime scene! I want cream. At the cream scene! Give me cream! Ice cream. And you'll also notice something about this bucket. Take another look at the court illustration. Something about the bucket seems a bit odd, wouldn't you say? Objection. This illustration was based on eyewitness accounts, so a small discrepancy or two is uh, conceivable. But then they're not telling the Then it's not valid, dude. Actually, Inquisitor Barnham, it's highly likely that this illustration is much less accurate than you think. Yeah! In fact, there is a blant contradiction presented in this illustration. <gasps> it's the rope thing. Admittedly, it does at first look possible that Miss Cantabella was holding the scepter and the bucket at the same time. However... If you look at the real milk bucket, the possibility goes up in smoke. Oh, yeah. Here, let's have a look at the real deal. Notice the handle. Ah, that, that cannot be. Hm. Indeed. Oh, but it is. <laughs> Go Phoenix. This particular milk bucket has two pieces of wood on either side of the handle. If you were to try and hold both the scepter and this bucket, well, Let's just say, uh, that'd be a challenge. To put it simply, there is no way anyone could hold both the bucket and the scepter at once! <gasps> Guess What? That must mean clearly you have the wrong bucket! Oh my gosh. No, we never lie when it comes to milk! That's this very bucket I took! Ah! It looks like the witnesses are as surprised about this as Barnham. Hmm. The defendant couldn't have been able to hold the bucket and the scepter at once, Your Honor. Also, we have already established that she was not holding a scepter in her right hand. <gasps> Therefore, the defendant, Miss Espella Cantabella, was not holding a witch's scepter at any point during the incident. <gasps> Mumble, 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 mumble. Order! I have order! Just, just what? What's the meaning of this? In all my days as judge on this court for the one week, I have never heard such an argument. <laughs> but I have a very good beard. He's up a paltry set of words, and yet 
They ring with such unmarkable strength! Your Honor, what you just heard was logic. <gasps> look, l l logic you say? What's logic? Is it like Legos? What is with these two? They Wait. just silenced Inquisitor Banham with mere words. <gasps> and logic. Such foolishness! <laughs> this must be some type of witchcraft! Witchcraft! They must be witches. Wait, wait, do you think? Could they be witches? No, it they're used to their brains. It would seem that the concept of logic does not exist in this world. <laughs> yeah, I what feel like that. What was your first clue? I feel like that sometimes in this world, too. Indeed. Right! Let's take this chance to knock their case down a peg or two! I'm worried. I'm worried if we keep this up, we'll be joining a spell on a one-way trip to the flames. Objection. Most intriguing! A knight allows his sword to speak for him during a battle. You have spoken with a sword of words. Mm. So be it! I too shall wield such a blade! What do you mean? Hmm. Sir Blue Knight, there appears to be a hole in this logic of yours. A hole? According to the earlier testimony, it was believed that the accused had the lantern hanging from her wrist by the handle. However, she supposedly dropped it, hence it being covered in mud. That's right. While that may be true, it does not necessarily mean the accused was therefore unable to use magic. Huh? Huh? It is a merely question of when she dropped the witch's scepter. Ha ha ha! What do you mean, Inquisitor Bonham? What? It's very simple, my lord. The accused, while first holding the lantern and the witch's scepter, cast her magic. Then... She dropped both the lantern and the scepter. Yes. Ah, that makes sense. And the lantern. Oh, okay. The witch's scepter was dropped after the spell was cast. Of, of course, uh, that must be it. What? That makes no sense. Uh, what you say, Sir Blue Knight? Aha! I am correct. That is but a taste of knightly knowledge of the Inquisition. Wow! This guy's an idiot! I mean, he cut through that baker's witchery like a hot knife through butter! That's right! That... that witch phoenix. Exemplary! I expected nothing less from the hand of Bonham! Woo! To be able to shake that powerful hand someday! Oh no! That Inquisitor isn't quite what he first appeared. Yeah, sure seems that way. Just a moment ago, it seemed like he'd never heard of logical debate. Now he's suddenly using it against us. What? This guy is no joke, that's for sure. Now then, most honorable witnesses! I ask that you lend us your aid once more. Meaning fabrications! Let's make up a new story! Yes! I request that you all testify to the court once more. Please no. Tell us which occurred first, the dropping of the lantern or the casting of the spell. Oh, Witnesses, man. you may begin your testimonies yet again. Tell this court in your own words about the sequence of events that transpired tonight. Oh boy. Witness testimony! About the sequence of events. Of course, the lantern fell to the ground after the incantation of Ignite Sploosh! I'm as sure as Snowy is white. I made certain to keep my eyes peeled on that milk bucket after all. Besides, how can you be so sure the lantern fell just because it has a little mud on it? These eyes do not lie! I saw the lantern in the accused's hand when the incantation was uttered! 
Unacceptable! Figures. Their testimonies are all over the place now. Hmm. These four testimonies, they are most interesting. The witnesses all saw the same thing, and yet, people's memories are evidently quite fickle. They can never be truly reliable source. Well then, Professor, with enough poking and prodding, I bet we can cause their testimonies to crumble. Of course. We knew to exploit their fickle memories to turn this thing around. We've got this, Nick. We'll press them so hard they won't even remember what they had for breakfast. Disturbing, Maya. Disturbing. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> I had eggs. I mean, now, Sir Baker, <laughs> you may begin your interrogation again. Man, it's like we did like ten trials in one. We are in Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. About the sequence of events. Uh. Of course, the letter fell to the ground. Press this man right now, Sploosh. That is new. The lantern fell after the incantation. Are you positive about that? I say I am positively positive that I am positive. I heard a voice and then sploosh! Okay. That sploosh. Was that the sound of the lantern hitting the ground, perhaps? Indeed, but of course, uh, do you see? But if you look at the lantern, you'll notice that the glass is shattered. You specifically said that you heard a sploosh. Shouldn't you have heard the sound of glass shattering when it hit the ground? Hmm. The sound of glass shattering? No, I am afraid I failed to catch your drift. Uh, whoa. What's going on you there? You just made something else up. I was present in an area a bit further away from the crime scene, you see. I have no recollection of hearing such a sound. No recollection. Precisely, so... I'll have you know, I can easily hear a dog barking across town. Do not underestimate my hearing. It is just as good as my poor eyesight. Uh, I wasn't. Relax, Grandpa. Don't get Grandpa mad. That guy's like, whatever. There is nothing of interest in this testimony. While the witness with the goat, please proceed with her testimony. Huh? Oh, oh right. What? What? You mean us? You startled us, didn't he, Snowy? <laughs> I like your Snowy impression, though. I'm as sure as Snowy is white. I made certain to keep my eyes peeled on that milk bucket. After all... Hold it. Not so fast. But earlier, you stated that Miss Cantabella had the lantern hanging from her wrist. Is that correct? Well, not quite. We didn't say for certain. We only believed it was on her wrist. Believed? Uh, uh, yes, yes, precisely. You know how you sniff milk when you're not quite sure if it's gone bad. And then your nose is assaulted by that foul odor that you weren't expecting. Well, it's like that. Uh, what? Heed my words, madam. Do not make a habit of stealing for your own safety. But she directly said she saw it in the other hand. Now she's changing her testimony. Well, we said we're sorry. Please. It's, it's all Snowy's fault. Bah. Bah. <laughs> oh, brother. Anyway, we can confidently say that we both saw the milk bucket. Right, Precious? And as for the lantern falling, we don't know how much about that, do we now, Schnookums? No, there's nothing. There's oh, nothing we can't. To press. We can't press her. Uh. Besides, how can you be sure the lantern just fell because it has a little mud on it? Hold it. What do you mean? Well, maybe the mud was already on the lantern before any of this happened. Did you ever think of that? Before any of this happened? Huh? Like, 
Maybe it's been there since last week. It did rain last week, too, after all. And if that's the case, then there really isn't any point arguing about whether or not she dropped the lantern. Right? Hmm, indeed. What do you say, Defender? I say, take a closer look at the lantern. You'll notice there's mud on the glass. Mud on the glass? The lantern wouldn't be very useful with all the mud blocking out the light. Miss Kira! I'd say your little theory regarding this lantern is muddy at best! Dun dun dun! Puns! Ha ha! I couldn't point at witnesses till the cows. I could point at witnesses till the cows come home. Point. Oh yeah, Phoenix is good at pointing. But that wouldn't turn this testimony into anything I can use. I've got to find a lead somewhere. All These right. eyes do not lie. I saw the lantern in the accused's hand with the incantation was uttered. Bow, bow, bow. To cheat a little bit. All right. Um, what do you think, Nick? Did you notice anything fishy? Yeah, possibly. Whoops, sorry, I was watching the chat. I think... I think there may be something I can use. Really? Wow! I didn't hear anything special. There was definitely something out of place about that one witness's testimony. It was something I haven't noticed from any of the other witnesses so far. It appears you may have found something, Mr. Wright. A four-witness cross-examination, there's something I've never done before. But then, maybe there's another way I should be tackling this. I believe it is worth trusting that intuition, Mr. Wright. Okay, got it. All right, let's try pressing that old man one more time. Okay. Of course, press, hint, old man, okay. sploosh! Oh, they only told, they only, they already told me to press them, I waste my hint coin. The lanterns fell after the incantation, are you positive about that? Wait, I'm getting deja vu. I say am I positive or positive? Blah, blah, blah. Would it be... That sploosh was at the sound of the lantern hitting the ground. Can we but present the note see... bucket? Um, it's not letting me do anything yet. Also, something oh, okay. about it shattered. Specifically said you heard a sploosh hitting the ground. The sound of glass shattering. I am no, not I'm speaking afraid. for him again. There. Now, there's something weird. See, look at her. She reacted to what he said. Hold it. There. Phoenix is There it him. is. Right there. I knew I heard something strange. Huh? But old Greybeard didn't say anything weird. Oh, Maya that said was Maya. that. Sorry, Maya, Maya, it's not the old guy that said something weird. <laughs> Sorry, Maya. But Greeby, he didn't see anything weird. Okay. Ugh. It's the person next to him. Dun, dun, dun! Next to him? Ah, oh, look there, Professor! The goat lady! She looks deep in thought. It would seem so, Luke. Right you are, Professor! She has noticed something odd in this elderly gentleman's testimony. Ah! Th that's right! These cross-examinations have four witnesses! Hey, Nick, it looks like we're not the only ones paying attention to these testimonies! You're right, which means if they're all listening to each other's testimonies... Correct, Mr. Wright. Each witness is fully aware of themselves and their own actions when in the middle of their own testimonies. However, it is while listening to the testimony of others that the witnesses may sometimes reveal the most valuable information. Mm. I see. It's habitual. Habitual. Yep. That's it's habitual, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
They can't tell they're doing it, but I can. And I'm going to use it to turn the tide back in our favor. In fact, I do believe I may have spotted our first opening in which to test this new technique. Mr. Wright, could I draw your attention to the touchscreen? The touchscreen? Ah! Lighten twice! It's alright. Sliding the magnifying glass during a witness's testimony will allow you to shift your focus to another witness. Yeah, I'm not used to this for other Phoenix games to have four <laughs> witnesses. Yeah. Right, so the important thing here... Oops. Other than this being a blind playthrough... <laughs> isn't the witnesses that's in mid-testimony. It's the other witnesses listening. Right, the ones listening. It's just a matter of catching them off guard and questioning them. What are you waiting for, Nick? Let's give it a shot. How about we try... Ah, the How two. about we try questioning that goat lady bum, bum, bum. next to Old Greybeard? Okay, all I have to do is slide the magnifying glass over that witness. Okay. The sound of glass shattering, deja vu, blah, 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 blah. I am a dear. Whoa, and now we Magnify go. Magnifying glass. Pew. Question. Hang on. Excuse me, Miss Mary. Oh, do you mean us? Um, but Snowy and I have nothing else left to say. I knew it. I caught her completely by surprise. <laughs> Mr. Wordsmith just uh, gave his testimony. He told us all about the sound he heard when the lantern fell into the ground. I like your phoenix right. It's cute. Mr. Wordsmith didn't seem too sure. But I wonder if you might have happened to have something to say about this. Huh? Well, um, uh, that's, uh... Uh, uh, is, is that all right, Sir Barnum? May we answer the question? Hmm. Uh. Do what you will, madam. There's no need for formalities. Uh. Why would she ask someone if she is allowed to answer the question? Well, we'll, we'll try and explain, won't we, Snowy? The truth is, we did hear something. That is to say, we heard the sound of the lantern's glass shattering. We're sure of it. It was frighteningly loud. Hmm. Ha! Huh. It quite startled us, didn't it, Snowy dear? I looked in the direction of the sound, but... I couldn't see anything, let alone the girl or those two thieves. It was a tad dark, after all. When the glass shattered, the flame inside must have gone out. Hence why she couldn't see them. That seems to be the gist of it. Th then, as I peered into the darkness, I heard it. You heard it? What did you hear exactly? You know that! I heard... The incantation for the spell Ignize! Hmm... Uh. Hmm... Uh. Hey? What did you just say? Now! Now hold it right there, witness! Yes, my lord? The glass shattered when the lantern fell, then after that you heard the incantation for the spell Ignize? Wait. Ignize! Oh my gosh, so the lantern fell first. Do you swear to this court that this is without a doubt correct? Uh, yes, uh, maybe, I, I think. Meh. How about my testimony? What of my, uh, uh, Observation! <laughs> or, I don't know, or a my or eyes. rhetorical... <laughs> my eyes! That blasted spell ignite occurred first when the letter plumbed into the ground? Oh, I, I heard no such thing! There was no sound of shattering glass! Absurd! Simply absurd! So the lantern found the glass shattered! 
That does not change the very fact that this girl is a witch! Witch! Unacceptable. Toy sword! Objection! I hate to disappoint you, but that's not quite the case. In fact, this testimony changes a lot. Wouldn't you agree, Inquisitor Barnham? Huh! What? What is the meaning of this? Let's go over what we know so far, shall we? Okay. Oh, he's so cool. In order for a witch to use any magic, they must be holding a witch's scepter. And yet, none of the four witnesses saw the defendant holding a scepter of any kind. Oh, yeah. That's because the scepter was made to disappear with the spell Demir, correct? At the time of the crime, the two victims grabbed Miss Cantabella's arm, causing her to drop the lantern onto the ground. Hmm. If at the time she was in fact holding an invisible scepter, then the scepter must have fallen when she dropped the lantern. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say hypothetically that Miss Cantabella really is a witch. In order to use any magic, she would have had to recite the spell before dropping the scepter. However, oh, yeah. as our witnesses Miss Mary has just stated in her testimony, she heard the incantation for Ignite after hearing the lantern's glass shatter. <gasps> Just everything! You do all understand what that means, don't you? Uh, we all lied. It means that Miss Cantabella, the supposed witch you've locked up, could not possibly have cast any magic. Therefore, the defendant Miss Espella Cantabella is clearly in no way, shape, or form a witch. <laughs> The guy went flying. Such frivolity! Do you Such realize? Such frivolity! You do realize you're insinuating? Do you really think she is not a witch? Um, Such nonsense! <laughs> Didn't any of you listen to my testimony? Yeah, that was what proved it. But we did! You're wrong! There was no glass shattering! Are you calling me a liar, Missy? You couldn't even see the mud of the lantern when it was plain as day. What ridiculous claims, all of you! Oh, hush! Take your little toy sword and go back to pretend playing Sir Knight! Whatever. Huh? Huh? Ah! Hmm. Witnesses, this is the court of law, not a playground. Must I remind you of the importance of these proceedings? Witches and their magic threaten our fair town of Labyrinthia. Your words here today could decide the fate of every single citizen within our walls. Do you not understand? As such, I expect each of you to take your role seriously and testify honestly about what you saw. Oh, uh, that's a little late for that. Yeah, it's over. Huh? Honestly? <laughs> uh. <sighs> Unacceptable! <laughs> oh, yeah. Gasp. In all my days as judge of this court, I've never seen such behavior. You're all witches! Behavior that leaves a cloud of doubt over the credibility of each of your testimonies! Indeed, my lord. Quite a miserable set of witnesses, this lot. Hmm, I see. It would appear this trial has come to a sudden halt. Huh? So that must mean... Quite right. It means you've won this trial, Mr. Wright. Yay! We've won? I can hardly believe the situation we have found ourselves in. I did not anticipate this trial ending with such a strange turn of events. But due to these witnesses' dubious credibility, I see no reason to continue. What say you, Inquisitor Barnham? As you wish, my lord. What is going on? Mumble, mumble. They're actually going to let this witch run free through our town? 
Curses! I came for a witch burning! But it's not proven that she's a witch! No? What? Wait a blooming second. This trial ain't even close to being over. Some guy. Wow. Not before I take the stand to testify. Nice name. I love that guy's name. Some guy. Oh. Order. Who is this? This buffoon. He's gone. Who am I? I'm the man that's gonna single-handedly save this trial on the fifth witness. <laughs> what? You can't have a surprise witness. What? 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 Even Barnum didn't see this one coming. Just as I thought, the trial was going down the drain before I got here. Yep. That's some guy. Okay, he's you lot assemble. We need a strategy meeting ASAP. But he's drinking on the stand. Woo! <laughs> I say, who would honor you exactly? Thank goodness you showed up. We we can't give up now, everyone. It has come down to this. Two arms, everyone. We shall do battle against the baker, the hat seller. Hat seller. I can't believe this. What the heck is going on? Hmm, truly fascinating. It seems a new witness has taken the stand. Surprising. Professor! What's more, he appears to be quite the formidable witness. What? He's like, what? Ah. <sighs> They're having a little meeting. Well, I guess. That is so wrong. Witnesses aren't supposed to discuss their stories with each other. Ah. This trial is still far from over. This is crazy! This is not a trial. This is like an insane place. This is a zoo. 